Hey everybody, welcome to Matt Men, your source for all things professional wrestling. I'm Andrew Zarian. With me as always, my forever cabana boy and my travel partner, Rich Stambolian. Yes, hi. Hello everybody. It was a lot of fun this weekend in Las Vegas. Oh my god, it was a lot of fun in Vegas. Uh, uh, it was back. A, it, was a, it was a nightmare, but it was fun. You know what? A lot of moments were a nightmare. That trip was a nightmare. We, we were back, obviously, from Vegas. Uh, we had... I got to tell you guys, uh, for those who were there, uh, holy moly, this was a, it was a, uh, a really awesome time. Humbling, I got to say. Was it humbling? Very, it was very humbling. Okay. Actually, no, it fed my ego even more. I feel like... <laughs> I, 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 I agree with that. I agree with that. You had a lot of Andrew people stopping you on the street. I did. And like a lot of people at SummerSlam, like, Andrew Zarian, what's going on? Dude, and it like, was... I, been doing this for like 14 years, uh-huh. right? 2008 was my first podcast. So 13 years mm-hmm. I've been podcasting. What the Tech probably, I mean, we're on hiatus right now, but probably has been my most successfully long-term, you know, watch program of like hundreds of thousands of people per week. Mm-hmm. I've never been mobbed like that. Ever, ever, ever. Uh, it's really awesome to see that the show has grown into something yeah. really special here. Uh, I think we have this tremendously very friendly community oh, yeah. of wrestling absolutely, fans. Oh, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Which is really cool to see. Uh, you know, we're going to talk about the trip, obviously, today and a whole lot of other stuff. We have a ton of news mm-hmm. uh, out of Vegas, obviously out of uh, SummerSlam and out of all uh, everything leading up to All Out and uh, Rampage and obviously Dynamite last night. I don't even know where to begin. Do you want to begin with SummerSlam stuff? Like what how, what it was for us? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, actually, before we continue, yes, I want to talk about the pool. Uh, big shout out to Rob Van Dam and Katie Forbes. Menches. Oh, my God. Such sweet people. Such sweet people. Uh, I had, we did an interview with Rob Van Dam and Katie Forbes that we were going to air live on YouTube. Yeah. Now, I had a feeling that we would not be able to air this live. Not for technical reasons. <sighs> no, yeah. Uh, just... Uh, YouTube censors, I guess they got we- something against women in string bikinis who are who are twerking. <laughs> I, 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 you know, I I personally don't feel like this is appropriate uh, to censor something like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. But uh, YouTube does not find uh, thong uh, sh- like literally just a g string as a bathing suit appropriate. She was basically naked, uh, which was listen, man. That's fine. It's great. Yeah, fine. Yeah. It was great. N- n- uh, we had a tremendous time. We did this interview with Robin Dan. We're putting it behind Patreon. Uh, it'll be up there probably tonight. Yeah. Uh, the biggest problem was I had to find a host for it. Okay. And I found a host. We'll have it up. Uh, I also want to give a big shout out. Robin, and by the way, we're going to have Rob back on the show. Absolutely. Uh, probably cl- in, in about a week or so or two weeks, uh, to talk about a CBD company, RVDCBD.com. And they hooked us up with a promo code, MattMen20, and you, you receive 20% off. Now, I, I, this is not a live read, right? I, I told him I give him a I give him a little shout out, and, yeah, I, and yeah. I want to talk to him about this because Absolutely. I don't have a lot of experience with CBD. Mm-hmm. I took one yesterday. Uh, Deacon, our intern, bought one. <laughs> yeah, they're good. I have to tell you, the one that he bought, it it made me a little loopy. Very relaxing. I was very relaxed. So uh, if you want to check out CBD, mm-hmm. rvdcbd.com, promo code MATMAN20, get 20% off. Uh, you know, I said, I'm like, let's let's talk about it. You know, I want to I want to do this. I had the time of my life in Vegas. I, I want to thank everybody that came to the pool. There was a ton of you guys that came out. Missoula hooked us up with cigars that created this kennel cough that I had to fight the entire trip. I think that's what made you die a little bit. Too. It did make me die. Because the next day you were like, you were like, I, th- I think I got it. And I'm not going to say the word. You're yeah, like, yeah. I'm coughing. I don't. I think. I, I think I got. It. I'm vaccinated. I, I got to get tested. I don't know what's wrong. I with did. Me. I got. I've gotten tested three times. I, I. I got my. I got my negative test the other day too. Yeah. And I was like, you know, you smoked a bunch of cigars yesterday <laughs> in a cabana where a lot of people were smoking cigars, and you were like, oh my god, that's right. And it made you yeah. feel a little better. You were like, oh yeah, I'm not dying. Yeah, I yeah. just smoked cigars on a 97 degree day. <laughs> so everybody's saying that there's a bleed over, just a little bit, like right here. It's not though. Now, uh, look, oh, maybe a little bit. Yeah, just a little. Right, it's fix. it's like a two pixels. Okay, I'll fix it. It's there a two go. pixel bleed, but it was fun. It was a good time. Um, if you were anywhere in the vicinity of us, it was good. We created a little bit of happy chaos. Also, Andrew told every single person on Earth that their flights are going to be canceled. And they were. And they were. <laughs> and they were. I was right. 
<laughs> it was like Oprah. You were like the Oprah of telling people their flights were canceled. Your flights canceled. Your, your flights, flights canceled. Your flights canceled. You're done. You're stuck here. You have to get a job. He was telling people you got to get a job in Vegas now because you're <laughs> stuck here and you're homeless because your flight is canceled. You're done. You'll yeah. never work in this town again. And then he was doing all that. Sh- like you'll never work in this town shit again. <laughs> You'll never work in this town ever again. Uh, it was a lot of fun, guys. Uh, <laughs> listen, big shout out to Jessica Drake. Yes. Adult film star Jessica Drake came over and was like, Andrew? Yeah, <laughs> we like, met a lot of I was like, hey, people. what's going on? Mm-hmm. Snuck them in into the Twitch lounge. Oh, really? The WWE hooked oh, us up with. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I snuck yeah. a lot of people into that lounge. Uh, no, it was a lot of fun. And obviously, uh, we have so much. We're, we're going to be talking about it for weeks on end. And by the way, we're in Chicago. Yeah. In next week, next Friday, we'll be flying to Chicago for all out. We're going to be part of the whole uh, F4W Wrestling Observer Q and A panel. We're going to do a live podcast from there. Live Mattman is going to happen from there. Also, a live okay. where Live Pal is going to happen. I believe Ooh. with Dave and Brian. Oh, could I pop in on that one? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Awesome. Uh, we're going to have Dave, uh, Dave and Brian on that show. So we have a lot going on, guys. Uh, very exciting stuff here on the show. But of course, let's talk about professional wrestling. Yes, sir. And what a week it was. Yes, sir. Um, you want to start with Friday? You want to start with uh, SummerSlam? You know what? I think the punk stuff is is we're going to spend a lot of time on that. So let's run through SummerSlam weekend. Okay. And um, do you want do you want to do the news real quick before that? Let's go through SummerSlam. Okay, let's do SummerSlam. Yeah, we're going to skip right. through here. So um, we're gonna we're gonna come back to Friday because Friday bleeds into Wednesday. Um, also, uh, patreon.com slash Mattman podcast to catch that, uh, full RVD interview, which is pretty awesome. Uh, I gotta say, and very distracting. Yeah. Um, SummerSlam, the biggest building I've ever been in, in my life. St- you know what? You've never been in MetLife? MetLife I've is been bigger. in Met- I've, Is it? Yeah. I feel like this is the biggest building I've ever been in. I have been in MetLife. I think MetLife is a little bigger, yeah. but not as not as cool. This is a nice, nice stadium. Yeah. Uh, Denise, by the way, had the total opposite experience that we did. In what so way? we were talking about uh, on, on We're Live Pal, which, by the way, is exclusive on uh, F4WOnline.com. We were talking about like our experiences, and Garrett's like, what was this stadium like? Because, you mm-hmm. know, he he's a West Coast guy. He was, yeah. He's fascinated by this whole deal. I was like, dude, it was remarkable. I'm talking about how how uh, Kurt, you know, we I thank WWE for those awesome tickets that they gave us. Uh, We're in the Twitch lounge. We had bars. We had food. We had celebrities yeah, nice. around us. We had these awesome seats. Denise was given like a bologna sandwich. <laughs> no, there was like no lights in the bathroom when she tried to use the bathroom. Oh no! Uh, the TVs didn't work. She they she had the worst experience in any stadium that you could possibly oh, have. No. While well, we had like state of the art. We had oh, a beautiful. robot serving us. Oh my god, it was great! <laughs> Bunch of robot hand jobs happened. <laughs> uh, no, it was it was awesome. It was the biggest building I've ever been in. Um, very family friendly atmosphere, you know, like super family friendly. Listen, WWE is not going to go anywhere, yeah, anytime soon. People are like, "This is it. This is the death knell." After being there, if I had two eight year old kids, I would take them to a WWE show Dude, in a heartbeat. I was I was sad that, your kids that, that my kids weren't there. Yeah. I, I swear to God, that this is the first time that I've. My kids are young. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, they're one's gonna be six, one's gonna be five. But they're they're old enough to like enjoy things at this point. Like right. they've just hit that point. I felt sad for myself that my kids won't enjoy it. And mm-hmm. when I showed them like the videos and stuff, they're like, "Oh my god, I want to go." Like I want to uh, go. So like now I'm gonna take them to like a house show when they do the December house show with the garden. I'll very take cool. them to that. But yeah. but here's I'm gonna say something, and oh. This was a realization point. Okay. And I think this should be the same for many of us, right? WWE has transcended beyond pro wrestling. Yes. Right? Yes. The the word sports entertainment was just a word until mm-hmm. now. This was extremely evident from 100%. The last mega show like this that I was at, like a WWE major stadium show mm-hmm. was probably 2017 SummerSlam. Okay. Like in in a big like m- SummerSlam level big four, big five pay per view, right? That was at Barclays, right? At Barclays. Yeah. That felt like a really cool pro wrestling show. Uh yes. Right? That was a cool pro wrestling weekend. Too. It was it was a great pro wrestling weekend. Yeah. This was not a pro wrestling event. No. This was guys, I and 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 I 
I, I feel like I've seen it. Like I've mm-hmm. now awakened to this thing and I could separate like in my mind, I'm able to separate like, oh, this is why WWE does this. And this is why AEW does this. Absolutely. WWE is not putting on a pro wrestling show. No. Okay. That days are that, that that's gone. You could tell by by their entire direction of the company. Oh, yeah. That this is not a professional wrestling company. This is a sports entertainment company. Mm-hmm. And you know what? When you walk into that building and you see there's 50,000 people there and there's a DJ. Yeah. And there's a musical performance and there's celebrity guests mm-hmm. and they're doing these moments, interactive moments in between things. This is Broadway. It's a circus. This it's is Broadway, the circus. Yeah. This is a variety show. I've been saying this for <clears> weeks, but... It is so evident that these guys are beyond pro wrestling at this point, and this is an entertainment product. A hundred percent. And you know, it's funny too, because the show, just the production value that goes into it, seeing it live is so seamless. You know, there was like close to no hiccups happening. Um, and I gotta say, like a very one of my takeaways from it was I can see why the company loves the Miz so much. Oh yeah. Because he, he's, yeah exactly what you've said about yeah. him all these years he's a carnival barker he's big live he's very big and animated which i think you know it, he's he's playing to the nosebleed you know <clears throat> um and it was it was very surreal just seeing that and you know what you're right it's not a pro wrestling show it is not it, i did not feel like i was at a professional wrestling show listen i've been a wrestling fan my first live event was probably mm-hmm. 1991 at the garden Okay, you don't get more pro wrestling than being at the garden. Yeah, I've seen I've seen the change at 37 years old. Now, I I now can recognize the difference where, listen, if if WWE does not do it for you anymore, Mm -hmm. it's not because they're not doing they're just they're not doing the wrestling that you want to see. They're not doing wrestling anymore. Right. They have now transcended into everything that Vince McMahon has wanted for 30 some odd years. A hundred percent. And that's to become something in the middle. Um, and also, you know, it's also fascinating about this again, just doing the, the experience at Allegiant stadium. Yeah. I think we both agreed that like, listen, they don't need anybody. They don't need a John Cena. They don't need a Roman Reigns. They can create cool moments, but it's almost like an explanation of these major firings that have happened where it's like the company doesn't need anybody. Yeah. It will continue to be a circus and it will continue to sell out arenas. Do you want a prediction? You know? Shoot. I'm going to give you a prediction. This has nothing to do with anything that anybody's ever said to me. This is all in my mind, okay? Uh-huh. I expect WWE to do a residency in Vegas within the next 10 years, five to 10 years, to have a residency in one of the hotels, like an MGM, where uh-huh. every you know night or whatever they do, they're putting on a wrestling show, and every couple days, somebody, somebody different's there. I, I agree They'll have that. a different headliner, yeah. like Sheamus will headline one week. And, you know, maybe you'll have a Roman Reigns that'll headline the first week or John Cena. Yeah, this is. And you know what? They'll probably sell 20,000 people a freaking show. Oh, 100 percent. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, the This company has evolved. And. It is evolving into something very different than what we talk about when we talk about professional wrestling. Right, right. And it was very evident mm-hmm. at that show. It was extremely evident. And it's not a knock, right? I'm not knocking it because they put on a tremendous... Listen, I I watched it on pay-per-view after the fact. So my reaction is a little different because I got Mm -hmm. to experience it in the building. So I don't know how you guys felt watching it live. Yeah. But I do have to tell you, being in that building, people were loving it. Everything. They were loving everything. Lovely, lively crowd, friendly crowd too, you know? Um, it was, it was all the kids dressed like John Cena. I always find very adorable. It, 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 yeah. <laughs> it was awesome. No, man, listen, it was great. It was great. And if you're looking for wrestling, you know, your, your version of wrestling, yeah. y- you're not going to get it a lot at WWE anymore. You saw the raw was a totally different type of raw. Yeah. 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 You know, they're, they're quick matches, right? Everything is quick now. Everything's quick, very quick. quick yeah. So listen, they they've evolved. They they have an idea. They're going mm-hmm. in a direction. They're making more money than ever. It was the most watched SummerSlam of all time. It was the highest grossing SummerSlam of all time. Bananas. It got the most press out of any SummerSlam ever. So I mean, when you look at all those indicators, they're extremely happy. I mean, it's a good thing. It's a it, it is a good thing. It, it's a positive. It's thing. a positive thing. Um, let's go into the matches. Let's go. Uh, very quick, like you said, Biggie beat Baron Corbin in six minutes. Fun match, good opener. 
Uh, yeah, fun match, good opener. Uh, Riddle and Randy Orton beat AJ Styles and almost to win the Raw Tag Team Championship. Randy Orton's so freaking over. That guy's so in that, it, like he's <laughs> tremendous, but he's so over. Yeah. Uh, seven minutes. Alexa Bliss beat Eva Marie with Dewdrop. That ending was fun, where Dewdrop turned on Eva Marie. Uh, three minutes forty nine seconds. Yeah, terrible. Uh, uh, Damian Priest beat Sheamus to win the United States Championship. Very good match. That was a fun match. Uh, da- you know what? You know what? My other takeaway is yeah. I, you don't re- when you're watching at home, you don't realize how long these entrances are. They're very long. Very right? long. I kept leaning to you like, yo, this is a long. Like Charlotte's Damian Priest, Roman Reigns. Yeah. I was like, yo, these are long entrances, dude. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I, I, I thought it was. Uh, and also, the freaking ramp was huge. Like, yeah. to get, like, it was, like, curved. <laughs> yeah. I didn't care for that setup, by the way. The football-style setup? I, I felt I felt a little slighted. Okay. I felt, a, like, I'm in an arena, and I'm not going to see an arena entrance. You know what? Like, yeah. Like, like yeah. a stadium entrance. Um. So, we got uh, Usos beating Dominic and Ray to retain the SmackDown Tag Team Championship. I completely miss this. Usos, oh yeah, is this when... Uh... This is when I left. I was like, I'm going to get us a couple of beers. I'm oh, going to yeah. get us some food. I'll be right back. You never came back. I never came back because the Allegiant Stadium touts itself as like the this premier cashless venue. Well, guess what? All the computers went down in the middle of SummerSlam. Was this, was this before or after I took like half of Issa's uh, edibles? <laughs> this was... This was during. During? Those are great, by the way. Those are fantastic. Little, <laughs> yeah. Um, so, like, I always carry cash on me. I was like, where? why can I buy anything right now? I just want a Bavarian pretzel. I want to buy Andrew a pretzel right now. <laughs> Nothing. Um, so I came back, uh, like, 45 minutes later in, uh, to catch the, uh, the Rick Boogs Nakamura thing, which was awesome. And uh, I was wondering if that was live. It did go live. It yeah. did go live. Yeah. Okay. Um, up next, you had Bianca Belair set to wrestle Carmella. All right. So here's where it gets sticky. It gets nuts. Yeah. So I have some news on this. Okay. Uh, go into it. So uh, Bianca Belair comes out. Carmella comes out. And it looks like they're going to have a match. Carmella's getting booed out of the building. Big time. And then what happens? So it was interesting because they they played into Sasha Banks being mm-hmm. there up until like that moment, right? So they played a video package. Then they announced that Sasha can't be there. So Carmella mm-hmm. comes out, gets booed, and here comes Becky Lynch to one of the biggest pops I've ever heard in my life. Like being in any <laughs> building, I, like I was at the Triple H return mm-hmm. in 2002. I mean, it's the garden, it's a smaller building, but this was as oh my God, what a surprise return as that would have been. Yeah. People lost their minds for Becky Lynch. So mm-hmm. Becky Lynch comes in, beats up Carmella and says, hey, let's let's tear the roof off this place and proceeds to beat uh, Bianca Belair with a rock bottom, which was interesting, right? What do they call it now? Her, her version of the rock bottom? Oh, I forgot. I got the name. Yeah. They called it something. Hit her, hit her <clears> with a rock bottom, one, two, three, pin, world champ, uh, you know, SmackDown Women's Champion. The crowd was into it, but everybody's like, ooh, like, huh? why? Yeah. Why do they do this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the reason for that is that they're turning her heel. So it kind of makes a little bit more sense, but yeah. the, story, the story should be, or hopefully will be, is that, listen, Bianca, this was her third freaking opponent. Right. You know, in, in any fighting scenario, you prepare, you, you study tapes, you study your opponent's moveset. Mm-hmm. So fine, she was studying for Sasha. Carmella is now the replacement. So she has to, like, in her mind, refocus, like, okay, what have I done with Carmella that's worked in the past? Right, right, right. Right, I'm doing kayfabe here, Story-wise, right? storyline-wise. Storyline-wise. Yeah, yeah. And then here comes Bianca, uh, here comes Becky, you know, top level, and she has mm-hmm. to now readjust for the third time. She was caught off guard. Right. You know, she didn't lose. She was caught off guard. And interesting. Let's see if this heel turn works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree with that. <clears throat> also, I want to reiterate that was probably one of the loudest things I've ever heard in my life. Big time. Um, it was a fun moment. I think the crowd really got caught up in her returning and winning. But then there was, like you said, that like aftershock of like ah, manhandle that, slam, manhandle slam. There was that aftershock of like, oh, that's weird. Uh, sucks, so, sucks for Bianca. Sucks you know? for Bianca. So there was a lot of criticism. Mm-hmm. Uh, one being Nikki Bella on the red carpet said like pretty much that this sucked. Mm-hmm. This is ridiculous. 
Uh, she was not a fan. A lot of people weren't a fan of it. But listen, if it's part of the story and they're trying to figure it out, like let it let it play out. You know, let let the whole thing play out a little yeah. bit. I I get it. W- would I have booked it that way? No. But there's a reason why they did things the way that they did it. You know, twenty five so, second match. Now. I was told this was not going to be the ending, obviously. Right, the right, right. It was something different where she was going to show up on this card. Mm-hmm. Uh, Becky Lynch was always going to come out for this live crowd. Uh, I, I, So that was not something that was last minute, but the title change was was the difference. That was something new. Uh, that was not planned. Yeah. They would not have built this Sasha Banks and Bianca Belair match as, as long as they did if this was going to be the ending. So... Uh, that was an adjustment. They made it, and we'll see where it goes on Friday. Mm-hmm. There's a little bit of issues with uh, NBC, with the USA guys, and the fact that this SmackDown roster is really stacked now. Strong. Which we'll go into <laughs> also when we yeah. talk about Brock Lesnar. Absolutely. Very strong roster. Uh, Drew McIntyre beat Jinder Mahal. Four minutes. Four minutes, way, 33 another seconds. Another cartoon has a freaking sword, right? And we'll yeah. talk about how everything is marketable now. Oh, yeah, 100%. Uh, triple Threat, Charlotte beat Nikki A.S.H. and Rhea Ripley to win the Raw Women's Championship. 13 minutes, quick match. The crowd did not like Nikki at they all. They did not like Nikki whatsoever. Booed. Booed from beginning to end. Fascinating, right? You would think yeah. that she would get, like, super Nothing. cheered, right? Rhea Nothing. Ripley, great, great ovation. But that's been a report at house shows, right? She's getting booed at house shows. Um, Edge beat Seth Rollins 21 minutes. Great match. I lost my effing mind when Edge came out to the brood theme and yeah. did through the fire and all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was cool. And I also chuckled to myself very heartily that Seth Rollins was, um, he's trying to kill time just like walking around. Oh, yeah. Because they yeah, were yeah. setting up, um, yeah, but did you see he smiled? Like he, he got a kick out of the brood entrance. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. there's a moment that, he, the camera's still on him. I don't think he realized it. He's just looking. He's like, fuck, this is cool. Yeah, you could tell he yeah. was looking at that ramp. Yeah. Because they had to, like, while Seth was doing his thing, and on the broadcast, did you watch it back on TV? I did. It looked excellent. Yeah, yeah. so, like, on the broadcast, you see, it's, like, close-ups to Seth, close-ups to Seth, and then he's looking in the direction of where they wheeled Edge's tower in, which I'm assuming Edge was inside it. Yeah. And then, you know, he had his own ramp. Uh, really cool moment. Uh, I think I, I watched Edge's entrance, like, three times when I got home. It was fantastic. Um. Joe Pearl peed his pants a little. Great match. I he had know. a little chub, but you he know was why? a little chub too throughout the entire the entire edge uh, entrance. That's because you stapled him to the chair and were just punching him in the is that is that in the bladder yeah. the whole time? The whole time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, big shout out to Joe Pearl. Big shout guy, out, to Joe guy Pearl. took a beating like a champ. Yeah, uh, <laughs> excellent dude, man. What a good guy. Good guy. Uh, Roman Reigns with Paul Heyman beat John Cena to retain the Universal Championship. Twenty two minutes. Uh, Roman's entrance is a friggin' long. Dude. Uh, it is. His entrance Obnoxious. is <laughs> so good. He's so yeah. good. Yeah, yeah, He's yeah. So, That's one thing that translates so well from TV to like you know in person yeah. is his freaking entrance. Uh, that man is what a what a perfect example of a pro wrestler in WWE. Oh yeah, like he is everything that 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 company wants in a star. Big and like you know what's funny about Roman too is like so many people were there to see the guy. Like there were a bunch of people a couple of rows ahead of us that were like overcome with insane joy. Insa- yeah, that yeah. Roman won. You know. Yeah. People going nuts, man. It was it, it was fun. It was fun. So um you know he beat Cena. Cena's laid out. Uh, Cena couldn't get the job done. Cena looked great, by the way. Um, Cena looked, yeah, you know, he was a little stiffer than usual, but he loosened yeah. up, you know, midway through that match. Uh, so big, like the both, like big main event style. Yeah. You know, you can see those punches from like the moon. Uh, Brock Lesnar shows Brock up. Brock Lesnar shows up. You hear that growl, and I don't think anybody expected it. No, building popped. Yeah. Building really popped, and it was a nice surprise at the end. Um, mm-hmm. I was sworn to secrecy about that ending. Mm hmm. <laughs> Uh, so I, I, I knew Becky was going to be there, but I was sworn that day because somebody sent me a message saying like, oh, Brock's here, by mm-hmm. the way. I was like, okay, cool. Yeah. All right. Awesome. Uh, I did not expect him to look like a Viking. Oh, that dude looked awesome. <laughs> like yeah. gnarly. Uh, yeah. So he, he shows up, he has the stare down of Roman, which is like a kind of a cool moment. Um, I really thought they were going to play into more of the Paul Heyman stuff. Yeah, you know where Paul Heyman is like, oh no 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 no, I'm like you know like I'm 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 okay. I'll work for both you guys. You know. Yeah. Um, and then as a live treat for the as a treat for the live crowd, Brock comes back 
and F5's John Cena. It was like the biggest F5 I've ever seen. Dude. Oh my God, John Cena goes flopping everywhere. <laughs> now, that was after, after the cameras went off. Yeah. So we're leaving. We're leaving the building and I'm like, Rich, hang on one second. I recorded it and I just posted it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It has like 800,000 views on I Twitter. Know, it's crazy. Like Sports Center picked it up. It's unbelievable. Real, um, like, real smart move to, to record that. Like, everybody, we were, like, halfway out the building when that happened, too. Uh, it was such a fun moment. I guess, uh, um, send the crowd home happy. Yeah. So, listen, uh, I thought it was a fantastic show. I had a great time. We left the venue. It took us about an hour and a half to get back to our hotel. Because we had yeah. to walk yeah, yeah. the whole thing. I made you walk two miles. Uh, Rich tried to walk <laughs> walk two miles, and I was I, I could not believe the the that that strip is scary. <laughs> yeah. It's, oh my god. It that, was a little that Las gnarly. Vegas strip was something else. I had to put that freaking mask on. Yeah, yeah. Not not because of not because I was afraid to get that thing that we can't mention on YouTube. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was afraid to get everything else. Yeah. Oh, hundred percent. You know, whatever whatever mutant disease these people had. I see. And, and by the way, can I just say <laughs> I just want to say this. Uh-huh. If you have an infant, maybe it's not appropriate to have your kid out at 1130 at freaking night walking to Las Vegas Strip. Okay? Yeah. Maybe let's talk about this. Maybe we shouldn't have our two-year-olds running unattended down the Las Vegas Strip. All right? I, I don't know. I don't like to tell people how to parent. Mm. Uh, just based on my own parenting, I would never take my kid, my infant, my one-year-old, my two-year-old. Good, my yeah. newborn, yeah, 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 and walk them in the middle of the Las Vegas Strip in the middle of the night. Yeah, Where, what time did they, did these kids go to bed? Yeah, it was a little bizarre, but like you said, like as soon as we hit that crowd, we everybody masked up, and we were like, "Oh, this is this is a little gross." It's because it's because the way the streets in Las Vegas are designed is that there's the sidewalks are uh, completely on the Strip. At least the sidewalks Ugh. are completely barricaded. Please, so guys. you had to like do the upsy daisy shit on the, you have on all the overhead day. ramps. You have all day. You have all day to walk the Las Vegas Strip. Did you regret? Is eleven forty five necessary to walk uh, with your kid? Did you regret wearing your your uh, red bottoms? I did not. No, <laughs> but you know what? I, it, it's funny because I had people asking me, they're like, they're like, wear your Louboutins today?" Because mm-hmm. I was I was joking. I'm going to wear my Louboutins. I decided not to wear them because I was like, "If we got to walk, I don't want to scuff these things up." Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I did not wear them. I just wore my regular loafers. Yeah. Did you regret the loafers on the no. walk? No, <laughs> no. It was like super I was wearing, yeah, yeah, super comfortable, dude. Yeah. <laughs> oh boy. Uh, that was fun, and we also got chased by Batman. I, we got to put that on the Patreon. Oh yeah, B- I, Batman was following us. Batman was following us for like a good. Oh, mile. and then that guy looking for Joel, that drunk. Yo, so we get back to the hotel. We're about a block away from the hotel. Long blocks in Vegas. Everything is so massive. The structures there are so massive. Um, this dude comes out of a parking lot like real floppy, and he's like, "Joel, I've been looking for you." No, no, you. where's Joel? Where's, where's Joel? Joel? I've been and- looking for you. Also, at this point, we're convinced he's not talking about Joel Pearl. Well, no, no, no. I was convinced. So in the beginning, I was like, okay, maybe maybe he was at the pool. Uh-huh. Maybe he follows us on Twitter. Because what are the odds that this drunk guy in, is like popping out of our hotel and he's like, Joel. Yeah. Uh, like, where's Joel? I'm looking for Joel. And I'm like, I don't think Joel is friends with this guy. No. Maybe he is. This guy came out of the he he awakened like the Undertaker out of the bushes. Uh, right, like, by the way, in an empty parking lot, like he, there was there was nobody. He was in an abandoned parking lot, and he just did one of these. Hold on, ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Uh, where's Joel? <laughs> but he spotted us from like a good like while Batman is following a us. good half a block away. He was like, "Yup." I'm going to talk to these guys. And he's flopping. He's flopping towards us. Oh, my God. And he's like, what's up, guys? And then um, I let you deal with that. Me and Jonathan walked us very much ahead of you. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, hey, yeah. you can deal with this guy. So he follows us into the lobby of the... He's like, they kicked me out. Of the ho- Yeah. And Why'd like, you guys kick me out? He's like, do you know why they kicked me out? No. All right. So, hey, why don't you sleep it off? We're going into, like, the our, our place. There was, like, you know, it's a casino on the floor and everything. And he's like, I can't go into the casino. What did I do? What did I do? And I'm like, ah, don't touch me. I don't know. I don't want to get bit by another bum. You know, <laughs> shit happened to me in New Orleans. I got bit by a bum uh, uh, in New Orleans. Did you really? Yeah, I did. He had one tooth though. And I, I'm not kidding. This is this, this is, is a true a, story. This is a true story. I got bit by a bum in New Orleans. He, I dude, gave, you're the new blade. I gave him a That's dollar. How you become blade. <laughs> I gave him a dollar. He gave me. He went to give me a pound hug, and as his his head connected here, I felt a one tooth, tooth just enter it you. Didn't pierce skin. But it was enough that I was like, get off me. And he chased us. I'm not kidding. I am not kidding about this. He followed us to three different bars. 
until he got distracted by another couple. You sure it wasn't Virgil? I'm pretty sure it wasn't Virgil. <laughs> Virgil has more than one tooth. Um, yeah, so this dude was just like, what did I do? And we scurried into the hotel and went to bed. Oh, my God. Fun weekend. You are Blade. You are, you're a vampire hunter now. I'm the daywalker. You finally. are a daywalker, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, we, I mean, listen, we have so many stories from this. Maybe we'll do another episode mm. in a couple days and we'll talk about all the, the fun shit that we did. Uh, it was awesome to hang out yeah. with everybody. Obviously, Vegas is a whole lot of fun. A uh, show from the Sapphire Pool was awesome. We're, we'll talk about that. Rob Van Dam, we'll talk about that in a couple of weeks. But mm. let's get into CM Punk. Oh, Jesus. By the way, submit your questions for the chat room. Yeah. Uh, save your questions. We're going to be answering a whole bunch of questions at the end. So, uh, Andrew did a very cool thing. He invited everybody up to his hotel room to watch Rampage on Friday night, which was a lot of fun. Uh, again, our building was so massive, it took me 15 minutes to get to your room. Oh, I know. You, well, I upgraded my room. You upgrade, you're on the other tab. Like I, 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 the- I, I am bougie, though. Very bougie. I am. I am. And, I, and, I, and I'm, I'm humble about it, but uh, yeah. I did have to upgrade to the suite. <laughs> <laughs> we had, we're not gonna, I'm not going to get into it, but we had this giant kerfuffle with our booking, and then Andrew goes, give me an upgrade. I don't care how much it costs. <laughs> That's literally what I said. And then the lady was like, all right, it's going to be this much. And then she goes, she looks at us, and she's like, you're going to be in the opposite tower of your friend. Is that okay? And I was like, yeah, we're adults. Who cares? I don't need this guy to be in the room next to me. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, what I didn't know is that this hotel is so big that it was legitimately a different tower that I had to walk down to the lobby, walk across like a bridge so much to get to your room. I was, I missed the first two minutes. Now, of were, there, were there like casino stuff by you? Like, was yeah, there yeah, like, yeah. there was like restaurants and everything by you. You didn't even come by my side of the no. building. Dude, there was everything. Everything you could want. Was on your side. Was on si- my side as well. Yeah. As your side too, you know, but there was so much stuff to walk through. I had the, um, you know, there was like the pool, the pool gateway and all yeah. that stuff, which was like music blasting until like four in the morning. It was awesome. Um, so we get and we have we need a key card to get to your room, too. Yeah, you need a key card to get into my room. We don't let we don't let people up to so, the 15th floor. I know. So Jonathan and I were like, yeah, this is a walk and a half. Like, where are we going? Sorry. It, it's fine. It's not your fault. Um, and then we, yeah, we ended up watching Rampage with a bunch of people. And that was a lot of fun. Yeah. And then we went out to dinner and that was very nice. Uh, people are qu- questioning what happened post bite to you. And people are saying that your credit score went down and was and you were completely broke at the uh, <laughs> I actually I actually turned into a bum at the next full moon. <laughs> Is that what happened? Yeah, like, oh, no. <laughs> oh, good. So uh, where are we now? What day are we at? Oh, Friday. So, <laughs> so Friday, you know, you, uh, you and you and Jonathan came to the room. Yeah. Uh, I did not expect this show to begin with CM Punk. But uh-huh. I'm glad they did because that whole building would have had CM Punk chance the entire night. But by the way, no CM Punk chance for any other matches on Dynamite. Yeah. Isn't that nuts, right? <laughs> I like, was completely like, nuts. Wow, everybody was well behaved here, you know? So this guy comes out, cuts an amazing promo, really soaks it in. Really, gr- I, I mean, just big moment. I think we all got choked up too in the Big hotel moment. Room. Big moment. Uh, listen, man, regardless of what you think of him, regardless of what you think of AEW, Jim Cornette said that that was mm. probably one of the best pro wrestling moments. I, I mean, I'm, I'm filling in the blanks, but he was blown away by that moment. Yeah. You know, bit, mega star done right. Crowd, huge crowd reaction. 15,000 people there to see him. Big deal. And like you said, super, super brilliant guy <clears throat> where he, he came out with a hoodie and then at some point goes, let me get comfortable. Yeah. Boom. Brand new shirt. Didn't it crash the Pro Wrestling Tees website? It did, and and there's a queue now. <clears throat> They've instituted a queue on their <sighs> website to purchase shirts. Um, he, here's the other thing, right? Uh, so he cut that promo, and something he did in that promo that I thought was the smartest thing to do, and I don't think a lot of people would have been able to recognize mm-hmm. to do this. He essentially apologized. Right. And he said, if anybody in the back or anybody watching at home, if my life decisions impacted you negatively or you took that as a negative he didn't say i'm sorry but he said i want you to understand i had to do that yeah i was sick i was i was losing like essentially he said i was losing my goddamn mind right being there and i feel free now like i feel and it was interesting that he brought up the fact that he left wrestling in 2005. He did not. He did not right. go to pro wrestling. He went to WWE. Right. 
Very interesting. The wording, of, the timing of the wording. Absolutely. Is very, I'm just going to put it that way. Yeah. What I'm saying right now about WWE has officially transcended into Absolutely. sports entertainment and what CM Punk is saying, what some other people like, you got to listen with, with the words that some other Absolutely. talents using here, because there's a reason they're using those words because they have, they've, they also see and have heard the same stuff right on the wall. So historic moment, CM Punk shows up 1.2 million viewers. Jeez. I think DVR plus three is 1.4 million viewers. Yeah, yeah. DVR plus seven will probably add a couple, you know, a couple hundred thousand more. We'll probably find that out Monday. Was that Guinness Book of World Records thing fake or real? What was the Guinness Book of World Records? Thing? The the debt the rec the record for the like the biggest decibel level for a live crowd or something like that. No, I don't think so. Yeah, because I, I saw something trending like that the other day. Um, I don't. I don't know. I that was a that. loud crowd. It was a loud crowd, yeah. dude, and it's going to be loud again next week in Chicago. That's going to be insane, dude. That's going to be huge. Also, we'll get to. But uh, I thought it was. A, I thought it was a great way to bring him into the company. Um, the mm -hmm. the what was crazy is that the entrance. It was so loud, right? That yeah. it dubbed. Or it it was louder than the music. Like it took. Oh, you couldn't hear the theme. Mm -hmm. And he had to pot the music up higher wow. for his entrance. Yeah. I, I mean, fantastic, fantastic stuff. What a song, too. You know, like, do you think he still has the rights or that it was a Tony Khan thing? No, a Tony Khan thing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the other thing, uh, the other, other interesting thing, like Tony Khan actually said the other day that his investment already paid off with CM Punk. Oh, because I'm sure he's seeing the buyer, you know, the pay-per-view advances coming in for the yeah. pay-per-view buys. You know, it, it is interesting. You know, the Hogan deal, when Hogan mm -hmm. came into WCW, people were freaking out because the, it was so, his contract was so big mm -hmm. compared to anybody else, right? Yeah. I, I, I forgot the number, but Eric Bischoff said that Starcade with mm -hmm. him and Flair, that pay-per-view paid for his entire year salary. Wow. Okay. Like, they were able to make so much money generating that the cost didn't even matter for Hogan because he was able to make it in one show, one year's worth. I'm not saying that that's going to be the case for CM Punk, but it's going to be a case for CM Punk where, mm. I don't know, can they do 200,000 buys for this pay-per-view? Oh. You know, that's, that's going to be the telling thing here. Yeah. It's one thing to be a rating straw, which we know eyeballs are going to tune in for him Absolutely. weekly on TV. However, pay-per-view is a different thing for $50. Mm. Can you get another 150,000 to 200,000 people to order a pay-per-view to see CM Punk return? That's going to be a big, that's going to be an interesting number to see. I think this this stuff going forward is now fascinating, especially with we're gonna get into it, the contracts supposedly coming up of certain people, certain people possibly signed to AEW, and just the shows that they're doing going forward. Yeah. You know, like these these are gonna be like I wanna say that Arthur Ashe show is gonna be record setting. You know, I wanna say all Dude, out I'm getting gonna goosebumps be, same here. Show. Listen, and, and I feel the same way about WWE. I had goosebumps entering that building. Oh, yeah. I love wrestling. You know, I love I love the, the spectacle of it. And it's fun. And and don't take my my comment that WWE sports entertainment and not pro wrestling anymore is like a, I'm, I'm beating on them. Right there. I got to tell you, there is nobody that does a better job than them. As far as putting on a show yeah. like this, there, there's nobody that I mean, AEW's fantastic. Mm -hmm. But the the attention to detail that WWE has that's 50 years of doing this. Exactly. You know, or 35 years of doing this on this level mm -hmm. that teaches you that. So, uh, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on, a lot of moving parts. It's, it's also fascinating too, where like, you know, like you get, you get this guy returning to pro wrestling after seven years, right? Or yeah. since 2005, let's say, right. Let's, let's take that into account. And then, then it just like, like there's like weird uh, detractors too, which I don't understand at all. You know, yeah. Um, there's always going to be that. There's always going to be those the, like the haters, but it's like this is this is such an excellent time to be a wrestling fan across the board. So mm. apparently, uh, apparently, Gangrel was supposed to be in AEW this uh, yesterday. Oh, get out of here! Yeah. So, uh, so here's a quote from him. I don't know where this quote is from. Someone just sent it to me, but he said, "I was supposed to be on a plane to Milwaukee on Monday." Monday. I got a return phone call saying, oh, man, we're sorry. We're going in a different direction. Gangrel on his AEW appearance being scrapped because WWE already did the brute stuff with Edge. Uh, yeah. That would have been dope. 
Imagine if Gangrel came out with Edge and they just went like straight vampire. Um, I would love that. So, um, if you guys also haven't watched that 12 minute YouTube video of the punk return, I suggest to watch it. It's very fascinating. I love that truck stuff. I, oh, dude, yeah. that was fantastic, right? Yeah. You know what? I'd love to see to, uh, uh, Kevin Dunn doing that. Very secret. I, really? I would love to see it because that is a... By the way, that guy, that guy produced WrestleMania. Yeah, He's okay. a WrestleMania uh, director. Uh-huh. Uh, directed, I'm sorry. Uh, just That is a nerve-wracking job. Yeah. You yeah, got to yeah, yeah. have... It, that is a special ability to mm-hmm. see the shots and call it and... Ho- Stand by, take, stand by, hold, take, you know, yeah, doing yeah. that. Wow. Very, very cool, very for, cool. For how many hours? Right. <laughs> with, uh, with what, 12 cameras? I don't know how many cameras. Yeah. 10 or 12 cameras. I, they were calling camera 10 a lot, yeah. so it could be 10. 10 was the uh, ramp guy, but that stuff was very fascinating. Uh, you also, do you want to go into Dynamite? Uh, from last night? You know what? Let's go into news. Okay. Let, let's dump in the news because I know a lot of people are going to want us to cover the news. So All right. Go let's into this. see here. And then we'll go into Dynamite after. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, so I think one of the one of the big things to come out this week is the possibility that Adam Cole is leaving WWE. Yes. Yeah, so this has become a big, big story. Uh, Adam Cole's contract ran, ran out mm-hmm. a while ago and he was working on an extension past SummerSlam weekend, right? Mm -hmm. So the goal was to get him through SummerSlam weekend, and then he'll be a free agent. His contract, he is officially a free agent on Friday. Mm -hmm. The contract has not been signed as of yesterday. Yeah. Um, So I will say this in the people with people that I spoke to within WWE. Okay. Mm -hmm. For the longest time, the anticipation was that he will resign with WWE. Mm hmm. Something changed. Okay. And now I'm not being told that he's leaving, but I'm also not being told that he's signing with WWE. Interesting. So a lot of people have changed. Now, the conversation with Vince McMahon apparently went well. That okay. was a, that was a positive conversation at that SmackDown on Friday a couple of weeks ago. Mm-hmm. So I don't know what changed, but you got to outweigh the pros and cons, right? Yeah, this yeah, guy's yeah. a wrestler. He's seeing, and I'm not saying that he's going to AEW whatsoever, but Mm -hmm. if he does stay with WWE, you're going to know that he has allies there. He's extremely talented. He's been there for four freaking years already. Mm -hmm. It's it's a difficult decision to uproot yourself when you've become, you know, the king of the castle and where you are. Right. Now, he's not going, he's not going to stay in NXT. He's going to go to the main roster. WWE needs fan favorites at this point. Sure. Right? So... For TV. For TV. Um, but, you know, his partner's in, in another company. That plays a big part. I'd want to travel with my wife. Mm-hmm. I'd want to travel with my girlfriend. Right. Uh, I'd want to see them more often. Your buddies are all there. You know, you're seeing the buzz with this company mm-hmm. happening right now. And the, 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 the positive future of the company with a guy like Daniel Bryan potentially debuting in a couple of weeks, you have an opportunity to do something very different and cool mm-hmm. for the next three years of your career, right? And you're very young still. Adam Cole's what, 31? Yeah. Right? Early yeah. 30s? I think Go he for just, three years. He just turned 30. I think 30 or 31 Let's he just turned. He, I mean, he's, he's, he's very youthful. Yeah. So. 32. 32. Uh, I would say... I would love, if it was me, I would go. But we'll see. We'll find out. Friday, he's a free agent. I mean, technically, Friday night, he could show up. Mm-hmm. He's a free agent midnight on Friday. He could show up on he could show up on Dynamite. He could show up at the pay-per-view. He could show up uh, on, you know, he, can, he technically, he's not allowed to negotiate with anybody, but right. his girlfriend's there. Yeah. So, of course, she's going to talk and for you. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is going to be a very interesting thing. Uh, Rampage is taped. I'm sorry. So next week, I'm you know he could he could be there. Well, here's here's the thing. Do you think he? I think from a certain perspective, do you think Adam Cole is stuck between a rock and a hard place right now? Because on one hand, WWE could just sign him to a contract and botch him up completely. They could. They could. 
the AEW thing is interesting because it's like they have so many people that you know, Punk, possibly Daniel Bryan, possibly Bray Wyatt. Do you think AEW or somebody is going? I, you know, we got we don't need you. you know? I, I understand. <laughs> by the way, I, I and I totally understand the fans like being a little apprehensive of WWE guys going over, right? Yeah, yeah. But here's the reality: it's a very small business. Mm. Everybody's a WWE guy. Yeah, yeah. Everybody like. If you if you're good, if you're really good in the business, the odds are you've worked there. Yeah, I I mean the, but you know now you're bringing in Bray now now let's say you bring in Bray. Okay, fine. There's a fit with the Dark Order. You know you could do something yeah, yeah, yeah. with that. So that's not necessarily he could be in his own little thing there. Mm. But Adam Cole, where do you where do you position him? Right, like how I mean we would love to see a program with Brian and Punk and. Omega. I mean, these are great stories, but what happens to a guy like Andrade now? Right. Right. Neville. Yeah. Uh, you know, like Pac. Yeah. Pac. You. You. They have to be very careful how they balance these guys, mm -hmm. and it's going to be telling. The next couple of months is going to be extremely telling. Yeah. On how AEW continues to grow and how they focus and and how they reshuffle the deck. Where do you? Let me ask you this. Okay. Where do, would you like to see Adam Cole? I already have that in mind. And I also think I'm going to preface this by saying, like, if this is the case with so much talent, Rampage needs to be two hours. Just to have more people on the card. I, I think Rampage on a Friday can't be two hours at 10 o'clock. Right. That's a little tough. Yeah. I like the hour slot. But if there was this influx of talent, like you said, you don't want people to get lost in the shuffle. But, you know, do you do yeah. you do you say like, you know what? We're going to do we're, Adam Cole's going to be on Rampage. You know, he'll he'll fill one main event a week mm -hmm. and Daniel Bryan will do the main event a week. CM Punk will wrestle on there. Kenny Omega will wrestle on there. Mm -hmm. You know, all you need is three matches on that show. And you got to you got a banging show if you could figure oh, yeah. that out. Oh, yeah. A hundred percent. And that, like it's it's a rotating show, which is which is cool. You yeah. know, and you have dark also. Um, I think Adam Cole would, I would like to see him in AEW, to be honest with you. You would. Okay. I think kayfabe BTE style, he needs to be resurrected first, because since they murdered him. Yeah. I think he joins the elite, keep him uh, keep him with that crew for a while. And then turns. And then turns on Kenny, or turns on the Bucks, or turns on whoever, you know? Okay. Um, I think that would be the way to go. Listen, Bobby Fish is a free agent, is going to be a free agent soon, you know? Yeah. Isn't that amazing that he, uh, Kyle O'Reilly and Roddy are the last two? Really nuts, man. I think yeah. they have, they have big plans for Kyle O'Reilly. They like him. Yeah, I'll tell you that. So we'll see what happens. But listen, I, as far as Adam Cole goes, his contract is ending mm -hmm. in, in f t less than twenty four hours at this point. Yeah. So we'll see what happens, man. Uh, you know, either he shows up on SmackDown or he shows up on Raw or he's on Dynamite. I mean, this yeah. is a very cool moment. And he's I hope cool. nothing but the best for this guy. He's Absolutely. young. He's super talented. And he's done an unbelievable job. And he really did a, a tremendous work in NXT for four years. Absolutely. So uh, I, I hope nothing but the best for him. You never know. Like, didn't um, didn't Nakamura sign a contract extension also? Nakamura did, yeah. Yeah. But so, Nakamura is so happy. Yeah, it's very interesting. Yeah. You know, like, you would think, like, because he's one of those guys where people are like, you got to go back to Japan. You got to do Listen, this and that. At the end of the day. Listen. Here's how. Uh, I'm going to. I'm going to. I'm not going to say this is Nakamura. Mm. Right. But. You've clawed and scraped your whole life. Yeah. You've wrestled your ass off your whole life. You have injuries. You wrestled in front of 500 people. You've wrestled in front of 50,000 people. Yeah. You're now at the end of your career, right? Near the end. Mm -hmm. Not saying it's ending, but you're, you're approaching that moment. You, got only, you know you don't have 20 years left in your career. Maybe you got, right, maybe right. You got seven years. Yeah. You're in the point that you want to make the most money possible and do the less amount of work. <laughs> Right, you, you right, want, right, right. You want to create that security for when you no longer could do this, you can live off that money. And mm. in Nakamura's case, he is being paid very well to do a fraction of what he was doing before. And he's extremely happy. Why would you not want that opportunity? Why, why, why wouldn't you take that? I, listen, I love wrestling, but if I was in his scenario, I'd probably stay in that company too. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, if I have something I still want to, I want to prove... And I feel like I can't do that in WWE. Guess what? Then I'll leave. But I, he's yeah. comfortable. He's happy. His friends are there. His and, family's in Florida. Absolutely. And it's also got to be a comfort to know that if he does decide to leave, he can go anywhere and still, like, still do be it. on top. Yep. You know, uh, very fascinating stuff too. Like the Adam, uh, Adam Cole, I think has like um, like a meet and greet 
For Mattel or something? Today. today? Yeah, yeah, today. And I think that's his last commitment with them. Which is kind of funny. Yeah. I wonder how many people are going to ask him where he's going. Oh, I, I'm, I'm sure everybody's going to ask him all day, every day. Uh, Pat McAfee tested positive for COVID. Uh, he had 104.5 fever Ooh, last no, night. Thank you. Uh, apparently the fever's dropped, but I think people need to understand how dangerous levels of fever that is. Yeah, that's pretty. Like anything over like a 104, like I, I hit a 103 whenever I'm super sick. Mm-hmm. A 104 is like, I need, you need to go to the hospital. It, it's yeah. getting a little dangerous now. You think, uh, you think he was on the strip? I think he was on the strip, and I don't think he has that. He has uh, he has COVID. I think he has something else. Oh, Whatever those mutants were had oh, on, that, no. on that strip. It was that dude. Who Wishing was, well. It was that dude who was looking for Joel. Miss Jump. Oh, Adam. Uh, uh, Pat McAfee. Uh, they, also announced, <laughs> they also announced Money in the Bank pay-per-view July 4th weekend. It's going to be July 3rd. Very cool. In Vegas at, uh, at Raiders Stadium, which is going to be interesting. And also Atlanta pay-per-view. The New Year's Day pay-per-view is now called Day One. Mm-hmm. Uh, Rich, did you hear the Nick Khan interview with Ariel Hawani? Because I have yet to hear the whole thing. Uh, I read some of the transcript. Okay, very telling, huh? Yeah, yeah, very, very telling. Like, you can tell, like, he, this guy is, like, a no-nonsense, like, corporate corporate guy, like, through yeah. and through, you know? Um, and listen, like, he he gave some good answers and explained a lot of stuff to people who are wondering, you know, and it's also kind of funny how he's sort of becoming like a weird wrestling celebrity too. He is. Yeah. You know, um, I think he's enjoying it a little bit. You think you're going to see him on camera? I, I would say you're going to see Nick Khan on camera. Okay. <laughs> At one point you're going to see him. They're going to do something with him. Uh, full sale partnership has ended. Uh, they have not been there since the pandemic. Mm-hmm. And uh, listen, WWE built the state of the art training facility with production. Mm-hmm. Why would they need full sale anymore? Yeah. And, and they're scaling back on NXT. So why would they need full sale anymore? So the this new stuff, the NXT stuff going forward, I think is going to be fascinating. Yes. Very. So I do feel like there's going to be such a concentration on dudes like Ridge Holland. Yeah. You know, like these are the guys that we want. Perfect example. Gargano's uh, going to be the top heel. Which is great. Yeah. You know, um, Dexter Loomis, another guy probably, that they want these guys to yeah. look like this. You know? Uh, it's fascinating, too, because do you consider NXT pro wrestling or do you consider it a crossover between pro wrestling and sports entertainment? I don't know what it is anymore. Okay. Uh, I, I always considered a professional wrestling show and, that, that, and they needed it to be that because mm. they were really gravitating towards that ROH and like the indie fan. Yeah, yeah. But... You know, first of all, the independents are other than GCW. Mm. They're pretty stalled, right? Right now, um, they're pretty stalled. So I, I would say they are an in between. They become an in between now. By the way, talking about independent wrestling, Catalyst mm-hmm. Wrestling is back in Jersey City. A uh, little shout out to my uh, to my guys over at Catalyst Wrestling. As you guys know, I, I work closely with these guys, and I'm an advisor. Uh, don't miss the combination of TV and I pay per view tapings live at Cathedral Art at from Cathedral Arts Live in Jersey City in New Jersey with four championship matches on the line, including Homicide. Homicide is going to be on the card. Awesome. Uh, he's going to be fighting. He's going to be in a match for the Sapphire Television Championship and a whole large. Uh, I mean, it's, it's a tremendous show. Definitely recommend you guys check it out. It's 39 Erie Street, in Jersey City, New Jersey. Doors mm-hmm. open at 7, September 17. Tickets, $25 to $30. So you get your tickets at tinyurl.com slash steal this show. Tinyurl.com slash steal this show. Check it out. Also, all fans must be ma- masked and present proof of vaccination upon entering the building. Uh, so a little shout out if you want to see independent wrestling here in the Northeast, check them out. Catalyst Wrestling live from Jersey City, September seventeenth. Yes. So, um, NXT, yeah, it's a, it's a hybrid now. You know, they're 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 trying to do something a little different. The stories, the 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 positioning is different. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think they're gonna have access to guys like a Nakamura or or a you know 
a Gargano like they did previously. So they're going to build a lot of homegrown talent. Mm-hmm. A lot of athletes are going to come there and, and start training. Yeah. Which we'll see what happens. Well, that's what they want, right? They want to build guys from the ground up mm-hmm. and teach them charisma and teach them razzling. Yeah. And to see if they could do it, right? Yeah. So they are redoing the set. Mm-hmm. And that was the reason why they're taped. They taped three weeks worth of NXT. So they have some time to tear the whole thing apart and put it together. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's going to be more lighting to make it look much brighter. Uh, some criticism that I've had of the NXT setup for a long time, that it's very dark. And mm. when you're going up against, you know, at the time that we're going up against AEW and AEW is all bright and colorful, it kind of looked different. Didn't look great. Yeah. And I, I think now that they're kind of realizing that they need to position this as like a mainstream product. I also do think that they're going to some for some reason, I have this weird feeling that they're going to somehow work in another tough enough. Oh, God. You know what? I think so, too. You know? Yeah. Like, just as, like, Could a be. segment. You know? Like, this is your... T- like, how they've been doing, like, the other uh, breakout stuff. I think this is going to lead up to, like... And next on NXT Tough Enough, you're going to see, like, their new recruits. Yeah. You know? It's possible. Uh, you know, they, they're going to try a lot of new stuff over there. Hey, uh, I want to also remind everyone, we're going to be live in Chicago. Uh, we're going to be at All Out. I think that there's going to be a whole crew of us from uh, GFQ Network and, of course, Mattman and, of course, uh, F4W and Wrestling Observer. Their community is going to be there. We're going to do a bunch of shows. Live, we're live, pal, from Chicago. Matt Men live from Chicago. There's going to be a Q&A session with Dave and Brian and everybody over there. A lot of stuff going on. Sunday's the pay-per-view. So when you see us in Chicago, say hello, obviously. Please, a lot of people are going to be at Chicago. Please stop by and say hi. Uh, I put it out yesterday that uh, you got to sign up for a high five. Yeah, we're signing. Sign, sign up for a high five from Rich. Sign up for a high five. I'll give you a beautiful high five. Uh, Dark Side of the Ring season three resumes September sixteenth, and I'm really excited about this. Yeah. Um, some of the episodes are going to be the plane ride from hell, uh, the infamous trip in two thousand and two where uh, it caused Scott Hall to get fired and Nature Boy Ric Flair to be sued. Chris Canyon, <laughs> uh, the life of Chris Canyon, and you know, I I have to tell you, I, I don't think I've mentioned this a lot, but I was one of the I was in touch with Chris Cannon near the end of his life. Oh, wow. And I would talk to him regularly. Mm-hmm. Uh, he discovered my show on Stickham when I was doing the Andrew Zarian show. Oh, wow. And he would come in the chat room because we were from Queens, and I believe he's from Sunnyside. So he would come in, and, and you know we would text all the time, and he told me, and, and I, I would love to tell this to the producers of that show. Mm-hmm. He t- I don't know if he told anybody else this or this is going to be in. He said he had a blockbuster he had some groundbreaking like information mm-hmm. on WWE and that he was going to release to the world. Interesting. Okay. This is what he told me. I, I mean, this is probably 2000. When did he pass away? 2010. I want to say earlier. No, it has, to, it has to be 2010. I, I did Cray Canyon, not Chris Canyon. Let's 2010, see. April 2nd, 2010. April 2nd, 2010. Yeah, I was going to say it was May because he was supposed to come on my show mm-hmm. late February, mid-Feb, something like that. Mm-hmm. And I was like, hey, because I think he was, in, he was in New York. I was like, I'll send a car. Come on in. Oh, wow. And, uh, you know, obviously everything that happened happened. But uh, I, I'd love to know, like, what the story with that was. Like, yeah. What did he have? Oh, what was it? Fascinating guy too. He had a huge hand in the Young Bucks' early career. Did also, he? Also, yeah. Um, I I wonder if they're going to talk about that on um, Dark Side of the Ring. Really also. talented guy. Yeah. D- different. Uh, right guy at the wrong time. You know, he would have been a big star any other time period. Uh, they're doing one on FMW. Johnny K Nine. Super excited for the FMW. Me too. Uh, Johnny K Nine, Luna Vashon, XPW, and the Steroid Trial. Wow. So this is a big season for Dark Side of the Ring when wow. they resume September 16th. Yeah. Uh, what else do we have, Rich? Let's see here. Uh, we had TakeOver the other day. Uh, I feel like we like it's it's awesome. Samoa Joe beat Karrion Cross to win the championship. This was Karrion Cross's like swan song. Yeah. Um, and I kind of want to go into like the Karrion Cross thing. Yeah. On Monday. So Karrion Cross came out dressed like uh dressed like a D and D character kind of, <laughs> you know. Like a kind of swamp gladiator or whatever. He was the, in the Thunderdome. Vince loves the Thunderdome. With the red mask and like this Martian Manhunter doohickey on his chest. And people were saying, why? 
Why would they do that to this guy? He already had an entrance. He had his wife. So he was a spooky guy. Andrew, why? I spoke to somebody there, uh-huh. and they're like, "Listen, dude, everything has to be marketable." Yeah, you know they're they're selling merch, they're selling toys, they're selling a whole bunch of stuff. They need their their con. And listen, we've seen it. Drew Drew McIntyre has a fucking sword now. He comes out with. Which they were right? selling for thirty bucks a pop, right, or something like that. I, I, I didn't see. Were they selling? No, it? they were selling the Lily dolls. The Lily dolls. Okay, so the Lily dolls sold out. Thirty, 30 dollars a pop. A pop. Yeah. Drew has a sword. Nikki has the superhero gimmick. Mm-hmm. Uh, this one has a ridiculous S and M gear. <laughs> uh, so yeah, everybody has to sell something. You which, know, which is WWE's old school mentality. Which is their old school mentality. By the way, when I say everybody, you're going to say, well, how, what, where's where's Edge's mm-hmm. outfit? I, listen, some of these guys have transcended into top level guys and they don't need, Brock Lesnar doesn't need a sword. Or, I don't think, yeah. by the way, I don't think Drew McIntyre needs a sword, but no. this is how they're seeing it. This is how they're positioning it. Um, Orton. What does Orton have? Nothing. Orton has nothing. Tattoos. AJ Matt Styles. Riddle. Matt Riddle has the freaking scooter. He's got the scooter. Um... He's got the hat. He's got the flip flops. AJ's got the gloves that they can sell. They they all you know? have something that they're selling. Yeah. And listen, and do I feel like this is an improvement on the Carrying Cross character? No, <laughs> I don't think it's an improvement. Yeah. Uh, and when when it was said to me, like when I, when this guy said it to me, they're like, mm. it was almost like, how else are we gonna sell these guys? Which like, is how nuts. do you how, yeah. how am I gonna sell toys? Like right, it was right, almost right, like right, that's right. that's like the feeling like, oh, OK, so you're going to buy this toy of this guy with just mm-hmm. like black trunks. And then everyone's like Steve Austin. I'm like, yeah, Steve Austin. But it's a different era again. Yeah, different, yeah. different mindset, different philosophy. A hundred percent. And you know what? I think there's a difference between doing it right. And I'm going to use New Day as that example where New Day comes out with a different one. You know, they did like their uh, their Power Rangers thing. Yeah. When they did, uh, I think they did Mortal Kombat not too long ago. They did Dragon Ball. They now they're doing NWO. I mean, they're doing uh, Wolfpack. They're doing Wolfpack style, now. you know. So, but here's the thing, right? Like yeah. Barry Darso, right? Sure. Barry Darso yeah, yeah. was Crusher Khrushchev. Uh huh. All right. In in, in uh, NWA, he was he was a Russian. He mm-hmm. was a he was part of the, the that whole anti-Russian thing that we saw in wrestling in yeah, the eighties. This guy comes over to WWE, and what do they do? They make him part of Demolition. They put him in <laughs> straight up S and M gear. Straight up S and M gear, and mm. nobody bats an eye. No, <laughs> not one person. We look at we look at Demolition mm. with like, oh man, Demolition. By the way, you know who else did it? Legion of Doom. Yeah, the Road Warriors. Same exact thing. Mm. Same gimmick. Same type of concept. We've seen this before. Why does it look stupid in the, in this scenario? Because this guy was already presented on TV. Exactly. We already know what he's capable of. Crusher Khrushchev doesn't exist in the WWF's universe in 1988. Right, right, right. It's not a thing, really, you know, or 1989, whatever whatever year it was. He wasn't recognized to the fans. And now you see this guy, 1987. Mm. You see this dude show up that you already know and you like, right? He's, he's, <laughs> he's a mega star uh-huh. in NXT. And now he's in, you know, the the... the the effed up suspenders and and a and a crazy ass mask. You know what? I feel like somebody should have stepped up and been like, "Yo, let's just go full gladiator with but this." But what guy. would have happened? Here's the thing, right? And and I'm not I'm not gonna I'm not listen. He very well. Mm. Oh, they did have the swords for sale. Twenty bucks. New York City uh, NYC Demon Diva was saying, "Yeah, there you go." When they had a blow up Drew sword that lit that had LED lights, mm-hmm. fantastic. When. If you're carrying cross, right? Like maybe you're you're into this. I don't know. Maybe you're into the the, the mask and everything. And I don't yeah, want to yeah. knock the dude at all because he's super no. hyper talented, and, and I want this guy to become a mega star. Do you do you feel comfortable saying like, guys, this is effing ridiculous. I'm not putting this ridiculous thing on. Are you crazy? Yeah. Or do you say like I'm going to be a team player and I'm doing this? I think. For, at his point in his career, it's probably I'm going to be a team player. But also, I again from my perspective. Uh, it would have been cool if, if somebody was like, listen, this is okay. It should be this. And, you know, you get like big shoulder pad, gladiator helmet, like real cool, like real cool looking stuff. It would be a different story, right? You want them to look gnarly and not like they, they, but, not but, like they rushed it together. But my God, know? what a great act. Him and Scarlet, right? They uh, had the entrance. They had the whole thing going. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, that whole, that, that whole entrance was fantastic. The yeah. whole gimmick was fantastic. So 
they took a gr- gr- something that worked and they modified it into this wacky uh, gladiator <laughs> gear. And, you know, listen, man. Undertaker was a freaking zombie cowboy. Kane was was a freaking undead. Right. Bray was was a bonkers, you know, uh, cartoon character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, Balor comes out with with you know crazy ass uh-huh. dreads, and he looks like a predator. Yeah. You know, WWE does this all the time, but it's interesting that how come you know when when mm. when these things happen, when Balor comes up dressed like that, it's not considered ridiculous. It's considered special. It's considered special. Right. But this dude doing it, it looked so dinky. I think because you could feel that he wasn't into it. I don't know, man. I felt something. (laughs) I don't know. It it was just, I don't know, man. We'll we'll see. Uh, It's it's interesting how you say, like, it depends on the person, you know, what they could do with him. Like, Samoa Joe is a good example. You know, he already looks like an action figure. So they don't need anything. Comes out with the towel and everything. I think some you know? guys are so established, they say no. Yeah. They, I mean, it could it could be easily as knowing your star power and saying, no, F this. You think Seth Rollins is going to say yes to something like that or Roman Reigns? Mm-hmm. You, right, you, right. You hand Roman Reigns that. He's got the glove, though. He does have that glove, yeah. that gold glove. That gold glove, I think, that sells for a lot. You know, Seth has, like, the wacky jackets and all that. But that's him. That's him doing it. Yeah, yeah. You know? What do you th- if Adam Cole stays and goes on the main roster? What do you think? A butler. He, he's gonna have a butler. Yeah, yeah, he's gonna he's gonna be the butler. He's gonna be the butler, yeah. Adam Cole. <laughs> the butler, Adam Cole. <laughs> Instead of Bebe, it's gonna he's gonna oh, go man. butt butt. Oh man, I don't know. <laughs> uh, Nakamura is a good example too because they gave him the crown and a guitarist. But he's done it. Right. He's done the crown. Yeah. Right. The guitarist. Okay, that's fine. He's he still he's still himself. But that's a good two pack action figure right there. You know, like Boogs and Nakamura in a two pack. Like all this stuff sells. Like anytime you get new ring gear, anytime you get new things, you have a different action figure. You know, I think there's like 47 Finn Valors and like a million New Days out there because they yeah. keep updating their gear. You know, it's yeah. good for these guys too on the back end with the money. You know, yeah. Where do you want to go from here? Uh, let's see. What do we have? Uh, well, we talked about Karen Cross's marketable new gear. Uh, it looks like Alexa Bliss is going to be Charlotte's next opponent. Alexa Bliss is Charlotte's next opponent. Okay, so we're going to do some wacky, uh, mm. spooky stuff here. All right. Um, Pete Dunn's contract. Oh, interesting. Is also up. <laughs> you think they're just going to feed everybody to Samoa Joe on their way know. out of the country? I don't know. I mean, you know, I, I don't know. Mm-hmm. You know, as far as I know, people people within that company are very blah right now, within NXT. Okay, very um, deflated, very lackluster. That was a word that that was used. They a lot of a lot of them feel deflated. Okay, so I w- can can somebody find out who's been part of developmental for the longest right now? Because there's some of those guys that have been there forever, sitting in limbo. I know Cesar Bononi's not there anymore. I don't know. I don't know who it is right now. There's definitely a few people that have been there for like ages. Um, Yeah. Like Kurt Stallion, maybe? Yeah. Or is he he still with the company? Uh, I don't know who's been there the longest. We'll we'll find out. Someone will probably have it. Yeah. Uh, Dynamite Orange Cassidy began the show. Uh, First of all, this was... I had some issues with the show. All right. Shoot. I thought for a a big CM Punk show, Uh they really didn't do a lot of wrestling. Like, like they didn't, I would have, I would have done it a little different. Okay. So you started off the show with Orange Cassidy defeating Matt Hardy. Mm-hmm. Matt Hardy's face exploded in this match. Oh, dude. Which is not what you want to see in the first match. Yeah. Uh, so pretty much Orange Cassidy f- j- splat get, did a, did a, what was it? He did a crossbody. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was a crossbody, but he landed on his head. And all I could think was, oh, my God, Rebby's going to murder this, this guy. Oh, my God, yeah. I, all I kept thinking was, oh, what is Rebby going to write now? You know? Mm-hmm. Uh, probably Orange Cassidy was fearing his life. Not yeah, because yeah. of Matt, because of Rebby. Uh, they continued the match. And I think they, they pushed it up a gear when mm-hmm. the blood happened. Like, adrenaline started pumping. And it was, it was a fun match, you know? Uh, Chris Jericho came out for, for the next segment. Mm-hmm. Uh, called out MJF for a third match. Uh, if MJF wins, Jericho will never wrestle again in AEW. Jericho back to WWE for his uh, Hall of Fame. 
<laughs> um, what do you think of this? That they're doing this another time? Uh, I'm fine with it. I think uh, I think this is gonna be like another good match, man. They work well together, dude. They do work great together. But where do you see this going? Do you see Jericho taking time off? I don't know. You know, he's doing the Jericho cruise in October, and he has okay. like another year and a half on his contract or a year on his contract with them. So I don't see him leaving. Maybe going uh, on tour with Fozzie or something. I don't know. I, I, I found it weird that they did this. I found this weird that they, mm. they did this um, so many times. Yeah. You know? Uh, Lucha Brothers beat the Varsity Blondes. You were going nuts about how oh, great Griff Garrison and Griff Pillman Garrison was yesterday. Is, you know what? Griff Garrison is a star yes. in the making. Absolutely. He's he's green, but my God, he has all the looks. The, uh, and I wrote, has WWE seen him? Right. Classic uh, classic babyface. Uh, Jamie Hayter beat Red Velvet. Um, and then CM Punk promo with Tony Schiavone, which I thought was very cool. CM Punk promo with Tony Schiavone. Uh, crowd went nuts for him. Obviously, uh, what did you make of it? What did you think? I popped like a big fanboy when the crowd was doing the yes chant and Dan and he did the Daniel Bryan tease. You know that's somebody else's shtick. Just wait for it or whatever, right? Whatever yeah. he said. Uh, very cool. Also, have did you uh, did you see the thing with his sneakers? Yeah, what did he write on them on, on Friday? On one, he had AC, AC. People think it's Adam Cole. Okay. On uh, I think yesterday he had BW, which people I'm assuming thinks is Bray Wyatt. He had BW on. Yeah. And that dude's been, no. that dude's been in the crowd. It's AC for AC Slater. Uh-huh. And it's BW for Barry Windham. <laughs> All right. <laughs> That'd be great. <laughs> That's what it is. So during it, let's talk about the Daniel Bryan tease. Mm-hmm. So at one point, the crowd starts chanting yes. Yeah. And he's like, whoa, 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 guys. <laughs> That's someone else's shtick. Yeah. You got to hang on a little longer for this. Right. And, the, you know, everybody went nuts, obviously mm-hmm. teasing the, Dan- the the Brian Danielson to AEW story, mm-hmm. which, you know, 99.9% sure this is happening. <laughs> and, you know, you want to do it at a mega show, you do it at Grand Slam. Yeah. Uh, because the debut should be on Dynamite because Rampage got one debut. You got to do this next one there. And you know what, man? Mm-hmm. Just the matches alone to think about. Oh, my God. It gives you a headache. It really gives you a headache thinking about it because... It just plug and play everybody. It's you know? everybody like, versus everybody at this point. Like, like you, you, Christian out of all the people kind of doesn't <laughs> fit in the mix now. But you it's know what cool I mean? though. It's cool that Christian's there. <laughs> it is cool that Christian's there, and I think the purpose of Christian is to elevate younger guys. Obviously, yeah, absolutely, right? absolutely, absolutely. That's the whole point of him, and he still could go at forty-seven years old and mm-hmm. might as well do it. But you are gonna get, and I want you to think about this bonkers possibility. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You are possibly going to get a CM Punk Daniel Bryan versus Kenny Omega triple threat <sighs> match, right? <sighs> That's a possibility. You're going to get Omega and and Punk. You're going to get Omega and Bryan. You're going to get Bryan and Punk done the right oh way. Oh my god, yeah. Right, finally. You when when uh when uh Hangman, Hangman, yeah. Hangman and Bryan, Hangman and Punk. It's going to be nuts. I, I mean, the combinations are going to be tremendous. Now, he's going to be they're going to have to be very careful with Hangman now. Right, they're gonna have yeah. to position this dude back in a major spot, strong. and he has to go strong when he's back. He's got to be booked super strong. So, uh, I'm. Can I pop you real yeah. quick? All right, we're at all out. Yeah, right. We are. We are going to be at all out. We see Moxley versus Tanahashi. We're not getting that, right? We're not getting that. Are you? Are you do you think so? Yeah, they announced it. They announced it. it's going to be Kojima. I think it's going to be a. You think it's going to be a swerve? Swervy swerve. Okay. Tanahashi versus Mox, right? You ready? Yeah. Tanahashi beats Mox. Ha ha ha. Celebrates in the ring. The final countdown plays. Okay. Daniel Bryan shows up. At all out, you think. Points to Tanahashi and just walks to the back. That, that's how you're doing it. That's how you do it. See, I'm thinking that you're going to have, it's going to be Kojima and Tanahashi is going to come out at the end and uh-huh. point at Moxley and then setting up their uh, US title match for New Japan Stronger, wherever the hell they do it. Okay. That, that's how I see it playing out. But we'll see what happens. Uh, John Moxley, obviously, uh, there was a Moxley promo saying that nobody responded except for one person. Uh, <laughs> at All Out, it's Kojima. Yeah. Is it a letdown? I don't know. I think it's going to be fine. I think it's going to be a fine match. By the way, Moxley, <laughs> thick. Thick yeah. boy. Thick boy Moxley. Love it. He's gotten big. Yeah. 
Putting on that dad bod weight, huh? <laughs> I want to ah, see. I want to. Ah, <laughs> what, is... ah, what happened? What happened? Oh, why wasn't he thick for me? I do want to. You think Vince said that? I think he did. He <laughs> turned to Hunter and said that at dinner. Absolutely. They were out. They were, it was Sunday in Connecticut. They're all having a family dinner. Muscles. Randomly. Randomly, they're just sitting by the pool. Doesn't even doesn't even say who he's talking about. Uh -huh. Just looks at Hunter and goes, why wasn't he thick for me? I don't know, Dad. I don't know, Dad. Uh, I think Monsters is Kojima would be a lot of fun because Kojima's, Kojima's a wacky dude. Yeah. Uh, Edge also. <laughs> Edge also. Uh, I'm saying Edge. Jesus. Uh, there was a Christian face-to-face uh, -face with Kenny Omega that and Don Callis. Yeah. You know, first of all, a lot of great references, right? That oh, he yeah. was always second. Oh, yeah. And he turned to him and goes, you think you know me. You so think good. you know me, which was great, so right? Good. Here's the thing. Hmm. Don Callis, if, you know, those little things in life take you in very different paths, mm -hmm. right? I think we've learned this. This man potentially could have been the higher power in yes. WWE. Yes. In that higher power angle. Yes. The 100%. trajectory of this man's life would have shifted into a whole different area mm -hmm. at that point where we would have never gotten Cyrus the virus mm -hmm. on commentary. Maybe he would have stayed in the business because he left. Remember, nobody talked about Don Callis for years. Mm -hmm. Until it was Chris Jericho that brought him into New Japan as a color commentator. Right. And this guy ended up becoming unbelievable uh, uh, on color commentary. So the whole that man's career changed in a blink of an eye mm -hmm. over the last couple of years. And it would have been so different if he, you know, stayed in WWE. So fascinating. Also, Very. I do like how Don Callis came out like right out of the gate after because he was following punk he immediately followed punk's promo and that crowd was super hot and yep. he had he stepped up his insaneness oh yeah big time oh yeah big time uh i also do like the carny shit i love it i love that shit yeah uh, uh you want to do questions let's go into questions um <clears throat> let's plug that patreon real quick because uh you know patreon youtube perks and updates patreon.com slash matman podcast uh we're revamping it uh, if you go on YouTube, you can go to our channel and click join. You get exclusive emojis and member badges. We got two new tiers live on Patreon starting at $2. Uh, we're going to have new content and posts coming daily. We got a lot of stuff to upload from Vegas that's going to be on there. Uh, we have a lot of new stuff that is on there from the weekend with the RVD video, blogs, pictures, uh, with premium membership on YouTube. You'll get some of the same perks from Patreon, live emojis, and uh, check out our shirts, man. Mattman Shop dot my spreadshop dot com we got to do something about that link yeah yeah we need a better link and uh we're also on a uh, link tree slash matman podcast for all the matman links we're having our chicago shirts coming out this week i'm very excited for these uh very excited to go to the show next week it's going to be a lot of fun a lot of fun we're going to be in chicago i i'm going to be on the road next week so next thursday i can remote do a remote from wherever i am since okay. i'm bringing my stuff with me cool awesome uh, all right. You ready for that super? The super chat. Q and A time, guys. Submit your questions in the chat room. Uh, we got a bunch of super chats. If you want your answer, if you want your question guaranteed to be answered, submit a super chat with it. Yeah. Uh, a dollar, two dollars, three dollars, five dollars, twenty dollars, whatever the hell you want to you want to fund us. All right. All we right. got uh, Chops owns four ninety nine. Thank you. AC on Punk sneakers last week. BW on them this week. Can't for you. Can't wait for you guys to get into that. A lot of fun teases. Thanks. We did get into it. Do you think BW stands for Brian Wanielson? Brian Wanielson, yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, Five dollars from Chris. How big a deal is it? Uh, how big a deal is Adam Cole's Twitch account? He said on his stream he's never leaving it, but main roster won't allow it in WWE. He's, yeah, he said he's not going to do it. He huh. said he's not giving up the Twitch channel. Um, It, it just seems AEW is so much more enticing if there, if there is talks with him. I'll let him do whatever he wants. Maybe not. Maybe they listen. Maybe this is one of those things where we're not going to make a freaking exception. Interesting. We're not going to do that. We're not going to. We're not going to start bending the knee. Mm -hmm. We're going to continue with our policy. Xavier Woods could do a Twitch channel. Who else does it? AJ? No, AJ can't do it anymore. Well, isn't Xavier's also partially WWE? It is. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. 
Uh, Ryan Martin's four ninety nine. Do you notice the Easter egg on Punk sneakers? Yes, he had BW written on it for Brandon Brandon Wineson. Brandon Wineson. Uh, also, odds on Cole staying since he's advertised for the Mattel event. Um, we'll find out. Interesting. We're gonna find out in a couple of days. Yeah. Uh, Jonathan, you gotta have those graphics ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, by the way, let me. I'm getting message right now. Okay. Uh, so I, I do want to say this. I made a comment about. The roster being one sided, mm -hmm. right? Uh, I could tell you that. Yeah. USA is not thrilled mm -hmm. that Becky and Brock are on the SmackDown side mm -hmm. and that neither one of them were on Monday night. Interesting. Because with John Cena being on the SmackDown side, he did both shows. Right, right. So. There was there was some issues with that, but with the draft coming at the end of September, or actually beginning of October, they've kind of been told, like, hey, listen, this is just temporary. This is temporary. Um, you know, we're going to shuffle the deck here. Okay. The stars are going to get shifted around, so don't worry. But, uh, you know, it's quite evident that SmackDown's the main thing now. It's a main product show. Mm-hmm. Dude, they need to go two hours on Smack on Raw. I'm telling you, it's that it's once you once you make. I, yeah. I know that they can't. I know that yeah. they won't, and I know that they can't. But that three hours ruins me every Monday. Ah, uh, it's interesting. You know, you would think you would think that something would be done about that, but too much money. It's it's a lot of money. Like you would think that USA would turn around and be like, "Listen, we're scaling you back on Monday. Just make it a better show." To make it a tighter show. We need Brock Lesnar. We need Roman Reigns. No, because USA know? is thinking about an ad revenue. You can right, sell right, more right. ads. You know, think about it. The ratings are not 5 million views. Right. That your ad rate is super high. Mm -hmm. So now you got a lower buy-in rate, ad buy, and now you got to spread it. You have more opportunities mm -hmm. over three hours to make up the money. There, there is a lot of pizza commercials on Raw. Tons of pizza. <laughs> a lot of fast food. <laughs> a lot of fast food. Uh, is a question from Boone. Uh, ask Matt, man, Andrew, can Rich twerk on you while you do the podcast? That's how we're going to do the show from now on. That's what we're going to do. I, my initial plan for the Rob Van Dam interview was Andrew sitting on my lap the whole time. And we do have a picture of that on our, uh, on our Twitter accounts. Yeah. Uh, from Dan Knightley, what would you rather see? Lesnar versus Reigns or Lesnar, Reigns, and Heyman joining forces? They could feud with Edge and Balor. I think the big stories in that match with Heyman. I, I mean, mm. we're going to get Heyman on a poll, right? Is that how this ends, or a shark, shark cage? cage? Shark cage. Uh, I'm, I'm actually, I'm gonna like mm. SmackDown. I tune in anyway, but like, there's never like must see. I got to like tune in for this. Yeah, I got to tune in for this. I want to see what the hell they do with this because Becky and Brock are both on SmackDown mm -hmm. this week. I'm, I'm pretty fascinated by this yeah. too. Uh, we got a super chat from Joel Wood, 999. Thanks, man. Thank you, dude. Do you think Cole doing the Mattel appearance and him and Nakamura posting the same picture of themselves on Instagram is any indication that he's staying and possibly joining SmackDown? I didn't see the photo. It, it's Listen, man, I, I, I think it's very possible. I think a lot of people are getting excited that he's going to AEW, mm -hmm. but like for anybody that's changed jobs to go to like a similar job there's a lot of there's a lot of things that come into play here yeah 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 you know 4 years of being somewhere but WWE's a whole different beast so you never know yeah uh we got Charles the Page who will be the next to feud with CM Punk i say MJF what do you think he said he who did he mean he mentioned Jungle Boy mm -hmm. he mentioned maybe it's Sting he mentioned a lot of people in uh, he had an interview press conference i think with uh um, with Tony Khan, and I do believe he mentioned a lot of the younger guys, and then he mentioned Moxley and Jericho also. Mm. Which I feel like I feel like that's a no brainer, right? Yeah, I mean, eventually, yeah, because yeah. of all the Shield stuff that they that happened in 2014, with they already know. Yeah, him and Mox definitely has to happen. Yeah. Him and Christian is going to probably happen. He's probably going to team up with some of them. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You know, you're going to see a lot of this back and forth happen. Now, let me ask you. Yeah. Do you think Punk doesn't need a stable like every other person? No, definitely much doesn't in? need a stable. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Keep him a loner. A lot of stables. A lot of stables, a lot of alliances. I would keep yeah. him by himself. Uh, Sal Rico, does WWE working with Logan Paul and Mr. Beast highlight the demographic they're really going for? It highlights their their new, new shift. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, the fact that they were at Rolling Loud says a lot. 
uh, they are trying to become more youthful mm-hmm. and more connected to pop culture, which you could see with the Cardi B. Cardi B was supposed to be the the, the host. Yeah. Right? I mean, she's pregnant. And then Megan the Stallion that we're going to get for, yeah, yeah. for the show. So they are trying to cater to a whole different demographic. And it's not uh-huh. older white men. <laughs> 55 year old white men that 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 top their key demo isn't going to create ad revenue for them i'm so sorry does uh does does our friend bob know who cardi b is (laughs) (laughs) oh my name's cardi b that's my cardi b impression is that that's that's a terrible i I did it for my wife and she goes that was a penny marshall impression (laughs) (laughs) uh from uh suprit any news on mr beast working with john cena at mania i have no idea uh, from Felsley Jr., according to Wikipedia, AEW, AEW's male-female roster total 120 members. Is there no concern, considering the number of pickups rumored on the way, that AEW is creating a lost-in-the-shuffle issue? Um, it is something to be concerned with, but think about how many shows they have now. Yeah. They have four separate shows. So, mm. you know, the ev- evolution and dark feature a lot of this younger the younger talent that you don't see on dynamite Mm. and then you're gonna eventually pick and choose i mean this is this is the plan right that's they don't have a developmental but they have this so they're gonna be able to pick and move people and by the way you know before the whole thing happened with the acclaimed these guys were picked from dark and elevation right right to come over and they've done it they did a great job you they know, are until, lengthy shows. Huh? They are lengthy shows. They are too. very, very long shows. So I don't know. We'll see what happens. I, I think it's too early to. I, I do feel concerned with large rosters okay. that some people are not going to get their fair share. Mm-hmm. Like a guy like Joey Janela, part of that original crop of AEW talent. You know, he's kind of gotten pushed to the side. So uh-huh. you know, sometimes maybe they need to they need to start working a little bit differently and give them a couple of years to get to where they need to be. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Uh, we got another couple of super chats yeah, here. Nice. Ryan Martin's four ninety nine. Thank you, Ryan. What are your thoughts on the AEW ending? I would have never had Arn block the black mask. I would have had black lay out everyone. I think the ending the ending fell flat. In my I, I actually like the block from Arn because because you're like veteran. oh crap yeah Arn would Arn would that's his experience as a veteran exactly and I got him just block it I caught him <laughs> but he did not expect a low blow right because he did not anticipate him to be you know this heinous violent man that's gonna low blow him what do you think top heel for the company he's getting there man he's yeah. he's really he's something special awesome awesome and he looks yeah. bigger too like all these a lot of these guys are getting they're like, getting bigger they're getting big i think billy guns uh billy guns workout billy chips. guns like telling everybody teaching everybody how to work out properly just spitting on them and yeah. they just get jacked that's Whoa. what happens he's, billy gun 57 years old by the way billy gun has the genes of like an immortal man he's 57 years old i know it's not right? nobody is looking at him on tv saying like oh it's so terrible this old guy is wrestling it's billy gun dude billy gun seven feet tall 18 feet tall <laughs> 18 feet tall. 560 <laughs> pounds all muscle billy gun is like the bill bradsky of AEW. <laughs> unbelievable <laughs> everybody just tells and folks we got another one joel wood 499 uh joel wood thank you again billy corgan said it would be a lot of fun if WWE participated in the forbidden door do you ever see that happening in our lifetime i don't see it i don't see it but i want to say maybe not anymore maybe and the big maybe is new day big maybe is new day new day versus kenny and the bucks maybe one day maybe one day maybe but as far as like like roman no roman ain't showing up anywhere no uh yeah it's it's you never know it's not it's yeah. not happening um let's see what else we got here huh uh money in the bank is july 3rd 2022 this is from balor club guys podcast money in the bank july 3rd 2022 in the legion stadium in vegas are you guys going absolutely not no <laughs> absolutely not there's no way i'm traveling july 4th weekend nope by uh, the way I, we're traveling labor day weekend and i had forgotten this pay-per-views on labor day weekend yeah. Uh, if I had known when I, when I freaked out, I was like, we got to go. Mm. I probably would have not booked it. Really? Yeah. Well, did you book your flights? I did. Okay. Thank God. All right. I uh, waited very long. Yeah. We're driving in, man. Like I'm excited about go that drive. Um, Mr. Gonzo was telling me about all the hot spots yesterday. Uh, I am Brozo. Of terror cells. Where's, <laughs> where's, where's Jake Hager? I have a mission. Uh, where's Jake Hager? Um, I think he's back. He's coming back in a couple of weeks. Okay. I just think that he took some time off. This is from, uh, I hope I pronounced your name right, buddy. This is from Shubhanch. 
Mahawar. Guys, first time on the podcast. Nice. When you guys, when do you guys think AW will realistically be able to fill a fifty thousand seat show? Uh, I got to ask this question. I want to say like ten times in the last like two days. <laughs> yeah, and I really, I would say maybe six months. In six months, they could possibly pull it off. Okay. So next year, I would say probably twenty twenty, or, or they could. I would expect them in 2022 to do a much bigger show. Now, mm-hmm. if it's going to be 50,000, I don't know. Cause you know, these attendance numbers, there's a big difference between 15,000 and 40,000. Mm-hmm. There really is. Yeah. So you're going to have to offer something really astronomical for this to happen. Um, I don't see them being able to do that today. Uh, I also don't see them do, being able to do it with COVID restrictions still in place. Mm-hmm. With masks and with vaccinations being required in some buildings, I don't see them being able to do it. I think for WWE, forty-five thousand was a real difficult pull. Mm. You know, they announced fifty-one thousand, but they barely did forty-five thousand in that building. And I'm not knocking them. I think it's because of the timing of mm. everything. So, if I were to say it, I would say sometime in 2022, possibly after the spring. Okay, I could see it being a real big reality. Sure, but. Maybe not 50. I'm thinking maybe closer to 35, 40. Okay. I think 50 is a real, that's a big difficult number. number. Big number. I, yeah, big, big number. I, and especially in the ticketing business, I think a lot of people don't realize how this works. Majority of the tickets for sellouts are not, so when, when an event puts it, let's say the garden, right? Mm-hmm. Billy Joel, right? Let's talk about Billy Joel. If you got 18,000, you got 20,000 tickets. Uh-huh. Only like 12,000 of them go to the public. Right, 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 right. The rest are like, corporate and you know season tickets season ticket holder holdouts and then there's a whole bunch that go to the secondhand market already you know from the garden they just give it to them like tickets (laughs) uh what is it hot seats uh geek seats ticket seats like all that stuff yeah yeah like they they get x amount of tickets to resell on the market Mm -hmm. and guess what a lot of times the venue like the event coordinators will hold back and put it on the secondhand market themselves to get more money from the tickets. It's really bonkers too, especially now that the world is opening up. <clears throat> when you bought those tickets for Arthur Ashe, you paid 80 bucks for really they're, good they're seats. Like, our seats are $1,000 a piece. The day of, they went up to 400 Yeah, they're, they're, they're like 900 bucks right now. Wow, insane. Yeah, $900. Um, Nick, this is going to be our last question. This is our last super chat. Nikolai Kreese, $10. Thank you. Is this our last question for the day? Yeah, MG Geek's telling us to wrap it up. Okay. Uh, should we be concerned with the increase in rematches on AEW, or will things get back to normal booking wise after All Out? A lack of rematches really sets them apart from WWE. Um, they're gonna they're gonna end up having to get caught into that rematch stuff mm-hmm. a little bit. Like we've seen it with MJF, right? MJF and Chris Jericho. Yeah. So. I think right now, because they have so much going on, that they've been able to prevent that from happening, but mm-hmm. I do see them doing it. Uh, yeah, I mean, but also, like, there's there's two arguments to that, where these guys need to get used to working with each other a lot, yeah. and for a guy like Jericho, it's probably his say, you yeah. know? Like, you know what? I want to work with him. I want to have a nice long program with him, and then I'll do, like, my Fozzie tour, and I'll come back under a mask, Yeah, and that's it, you know? And missed everybody. Yeah, it's interesting stuff, man. Yeah. All right. Uh, sorry, we cannot get to all the questions. We're running out of time here because I got to go in 10 minutes. I got to get on a train. Holy crap. I need to get get out of here. All right. All right, guys. Uh, we'll be back next week. And we're going to be in Chicago on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, Ooh. flying back Monday. So if you see us in Chicago, say hello. We'll see you all next time, guys. Later. Take care.